Now, this is the avatar of the patient who heard a voice, her voice, for more than 30 years. Um, and I'm going to show you the effect of the therapy on this man. Charles is not his real name. So he heard the voices for more than 30 years. And during the therapy, the voices changed from being continuous to occurring only once a week, from being hours at a time to reducing to several minutes. At the beginning, he was more than 50% sure they came from an external source. But by the end of the therapy, he believed they were entirely self-generated. What is interesting about this man is that about halfway through the sessions, he suddenly said, you know, I'm beginning to understand that what the voices say are what I think about myself. Uh, the majority were unpleasant at the beginning and, that, and then after therapy occasionally unpleasant. His self-depreciation was severe and then reduced to mild and suicidal thoughts which started off as mild became absent. I'll tell you a bit about his history. He was uh, brought up by a mother, his father was absent and every night his mother would go to the pub and drink and leave him in the care, he said, of an alcoholic tramp and his two elder brothers who bullied him. So he had a horrible childhood and began to feel that he was an awful person as a result. And that explains his very low self-esteem. And this is the chief executive of a film company, according to the patient. I'm going to call the patient Bernard. Uh, next slide. Bernard was himself uh, a chief executive in a film company <coughs> until he began to develop attacks of unconsciousness and he retired. Um, I never found out what the cause of that was. But three and a half years before he came to see me, he heard the voice of uh, another chief executive, this woman, not talking to him, but holding business meetings with her subordinates every morning from 5 a.m. onwards. And uh, he was very upset by this. He said he needed his sleep and, and she was keeping him awake. He completely believed in her presence, although he had no explanation for it. Um, for the first session, he was very gentlemanly and um, didn't make a, a lot of fuss about it. He just said, oh, look, I, I do need to sleep. Uh, would you please not, uh, uh, not disturb me in the mornings? And then in the second session, I tried to persuade him to become much more aggressive with this woman. And I said to him, look, she's disturbing your sleep. She's behaving very... Um, Wrongly, no, nobody holds business meetings at 5 a.m. Tell her to keep her business meetings to the ordinary times between 9 and 5. And furthermore, she's letting you hear uh, the secrets of her trade. And he became very angry. And he said, Madam, you must not start your meetings until 2 p.m. <laughs> Wait, you're a traitor to your company. <clears throat> All right, so as you see, my strategy with him was to take him entirely seriously and the woman too, because he had no insight. And after the second session, he left, and then he came back for the third session, and I said, Bernard, are you ready to have the next session? He said, I don't need it. I said, why? He said, she's gone. Now, this absolutely took me by surprise. I had no idea that the therapy could produce a, a disappearance of the voice in such a short time. And as a result, Instead of being distressing the majority of time, there was no distress. His moderate depression became mild. He was now sleeping until 7 a.m. And at the third three-month follow-up, the voice was absent. Now, I thought this, this must just be a chance finding. This is so, un, so unexpected. This is a red devil. And the devil belongs to Saul, not his real name, who was the only businessman in the study. He arrived um, in a car with a three-point, three-piece suit and a large uh, briefcase. He made his money by investing in property. And 16 years previous to coming to me, he began to hear the voice of the devil giving him advice on his investments. And like um, the bankers uh, in the current crisis, he took the devil's advice and lost all his money. <laughs> and. Uh, he was very angry from the first moment he saw the avatar. He shouted to the avatar and said, I don't want to hear from you. You're spoiling my life. Get out of my life. Never come back. And uh, at the seven, second session, he was even more ferocious, but he completely believed that this was the devil. So I said to him, tell the devil 
he has no business with you, tell him to go back to hell, which he did. And then when he came back for the third session, he said to me, you know, I don't need another session. I said, why? And he said, well, when I was walking up the slope from the hospital last week after the second session, the devil started talking to me and I said to him, go away, you are never ever coming back. He said, and he's gone. So again, I was amazed. Um, and he thanked us for giving him his life back. Uh, at the three-month follow-up, however, he told me that the voice returned, but only at night. You didn't hear it during the day. So I said to him, how do you spend your evenings? He said, well, I start working on my computer at 12 midnight, and I go on till 2 a.m. And I said, are you listening to the MP3? Um, I encouraged all the patients to listen to the recordings of their sessions so that they could rehearse what they'd learned um, by standing up to the avatar. And he said, no, I, I don't use it. So I said, look, you're still vulnerable. You mustn't work beyond midnight, and you must listen to the MP3. I phoned him again two, two weeks later, and he said, the voice is gone. And he said, my mind is completely clear now. I saw him two years later because the BBC wanted to make a program on this therapy, and he agreed to come up. And um, he was perfectly well, and he told us that he'd just got a job as a financial advisor, and he was off abroad. This, uh, this young man, well, that's not the young man, this is his avatar. Uh, this young man um, developed schizophrenia as an adolescent and was admitted to an adult psychiatric ward because there were no adolescent beds. While on the ward, he was sexually abused by the, another adult patient on the ward. And that went on for two months before the nurses realized what was going on. Um, finally, when he, when he was released from hospital, he began to hear the voice of his abuser, and that was for 13 years. He didn't want to see the face of the abuser when we showed him on the screen, and, uh, but he was able to speak to the avatar, and we just deleted the face of the abuser. Um, he, he, like many victims of sexual abuse, he blamed himself for the abuse. And the uh, avatar was telling him, you are spoiled forever, you're disgusting. Um, anyway, after the fifth session, um, the avatar changed, as, as I did with most of them, and said, I'm sorry what I, for what I did for you, it was a terrible thing, and there was nothing you could do to help yourself because um, you'd been put in the wrong ward. And the patient said, you're quite right, it was the doctor's fault. So the avatar said, now I want you to say, Richard, it was not my fault. And Richard said, it was not my fault, it was not my fault. The avatar said, right, now whenever you feel bad about yourself, listen to your MP3 and listen to that session. And after the fifth session, the voice disappeared. The patient was so excited by this that he went out every night uh, drinking with his friends. And after two weeks, the voice returned and had a relapse of his uh, illness and had to go into a crisis house. I went to see him there and I said, you know, I think if you come back for a few sessions, it's possible that we might be able to give you more help. He came back, and after a single additional session, the voice disappeared. And when I saw him th a three-month follow-up, the voice was no longer there.